Hey everybody, this is David with Average Joe Investing, and over the last week or so, I've had a lot of people reaching out to me to ask kind of what my plan is or what my strategy is right now in the stock market, because honestly, we're in kind of a weird period of time. The Dow is down over a thousand points in the last month, but while most of our portfolios obviously are down, I think a lot of people are still up in the majority of the positions they have in their portfolios. So I thought it'd be cool to share with you guys today kind of the five things going through my mind and kind of what I've been doing with my money lately and kind of what I plan on doing with it going forward if we kind of stay with the kind of trends we have going on right now. The number one biggest change in my portfolio right now is absolutely going to be my cash flow. So I'm a huge fan of dollar cost averaging, which basically just means that every single week I have a consistent amount of money getting invested into my investing accounts. However, with kind of the trends in the market right now, that number's actually been cut in half. So I'm only investing half the amount of money that I was a month ago every single week into the stock market. And the reasoning is pretty simple, you know, the whole point of the stock market is to buy low and try to sell high. However, if you're in a period of time where the stock market is going down, if your dollar cost averaging every single week you're buying kind of higher, and then it drops down the next week you buy in more, and then it drops and you buy in more. And honestly, it's one of those trends where you don't want to be in that period too awful long. And unfortunately, uh, kind of taking a look at the way things are going, I don't know that the stock market is going to bounce back immediately. So I have cut down actually the amount of money I'm investing. So I'm definitely still putting money in. However, I've reduced the amount of money I'm putting into the market simply because there's not a ton of great buys that I absolutely love out there. Like I said, yes, the stock market's gone down a thousand points. However, in the long run of things, I'm still up on the majority of my positions, which means the dollar cost averaging is actually raising my average cost per share right now. So just kind of general rule of thumb, I like the idea of cutting that money in half. And don't get me wrong, I'm a big fan of time in the market is better than timing the market, and that's why I'm still investing money. However, while the market's kind of in that downward trend, I'm just lowering the amount of money that I'm investing every single week. The second major way that I've changed my investing strategy here over the last couple of weeks is I'm actually doubling down on certain positions. So just for example, if I were to throw $200 into my M1 Finance account, it would divide it up by however my pie is set up, and like I just said, a lot of my positions are up currently, so it'd actually be raising my average cost per share. So instead of doing that, I'm actually pinpointing a couple of individual stocks that I just really like the valuation on. And I'll be releasing the stocks I'm buying video here in the next day or two, and you'll see a lot of familiar faces, a bunch of things that have either been in my portfolio for a long time, or stocks that have fell out of my portfolio, but I really like the valuation right now. So instead of having just kind of a blanket investment, I'm going in and pinpointing individual stocks because there's a couple, you know, that, hey, I really like this stock at $70 per share. It's actually currently down in my portfolio. So if I loved it at 70, I probably like it a lot more at $65 per share. So rather than just doing a blanket investment in my portfolio like I usually would, right now with the down in the stock market, I'm absolutely kind of bouncing around and picking out three or four individual stocks that I really like and just kind of expanding my position in those. The third major thing that's changed in my portfolio is honestly something I don't take advantage of nearly as often as some other people. And that's gonna be, I've actually created a few stop losses in my portfolio. Now, I know that the literal sense of the term sounds like, you know, hey, you just wanna mitigate losses as much as possible. However, that's not the only way to use them. So for example, we'll just say Texas Instruments, which I was buying at about, what, 92 bucks a share, 93 bucks a share. They got up to almost $120 per share. So obviously right now we have kind of a slide in the market. Texas Instruments is somewhere around $106, $107 right now. So I could set a stop loss at say $105. And if the stock ever goes to that point, then it'll actually sell that position out of my portfolio. So obviously, you know, we're not gonna go from 92 to 120. However, it's gonna stop it from sliding down any further than that. So I'm still gonna sell it at $105 and make, you know, 17 bucks a share. And that's not something I do that often. However, I think it's important to lock in profits. It's something we've talked about before. And it's just one of those extra kind of things you can slide in there to give yourself a little bit of extra protection in this kind of slide. And you know, a lot of this is being done in a Roth IRA account, which is absolutely fine because you know, if the market's gonna to continue to slide back down, I don't have to worry about tax implications. And if the stock goes back down to say, you know, a 96, 97 bucks, we could always buy back in. And no, I'm not selling Texas Instruments. I just use that as an example. However, I have set up a couple of stop losses in my portfolio just because we're not sure what the, you know, what the stock market is going to do right now. And one thing to be aware of, stop losses are not 100% foolproof. You know, say for example, you have something like stamps.com where the stock price dropped just in half one day. So let's say you had them back when they were almost $200 per share. 
you couldn't have put in a stop loss to say $150 and been guaranteed to get that $150 per share. You know, that stock price never traded at 150. It went directly from 200 down to about $100 per share. So stop losses, definitely not foolproof. However, they are a nice thing to put into your portfolio to either guarantee profits when the stock market's going down, you know, you're gonna lock it in at least some profit, or it is a nice thing to put in there again, if the stock market's kind of fluctuating a little bit and you're afraid a position's gonna go down over the next month or so, it isn't necessarily the worst thing to put a couple of them in place, just so if they do drop off, you know, you're not gonna lose 40, 50% of your portfolio in a huge drop. The fourth thing I've been really focusing on here over the last week or two isn't necessarily my portfolio per se, but it's what I'm gonna be doing with the other money that isn't being put into my portfolio right now. So like I said, my cash flow has dropped down to about half. I'm not putting in as much money as I was. So what am I doing with that additional money? Well, I'm honestly kind of a hustler. I like to turn money into money. So I'm not just gonna stop investing it and just you know leave that money in a bank account somewhere. I've been looking at other ways to invest my money. You know, the bond market might not follow the stock market. Real estate might not follow the stock market that much. So you might get into real estate investment trust. Or in my specific scenario, as many of you guys know, I bought a house a little over a year ago. We're already looking at potentially, you know, building another house or kind of moving somewhere else. So I've been actually taking some of the money I haven't been investing and reinvesting it into the house to kind of update it a little bit because our plan in the long run is to actually rent out this house. So while I might not be investing in the stock market, I'm absolutely finding other kind of creative ways to invest my money to try to make more money. If the stock market isn't having great returns right now, why not try to turn that into another sector where you can still make money? And the bond market might not always follow the stock market. Real estate might not always follow the stock market. You know, a side hustle, buying things and selling them on your own might not, you know, necessarily follow the stock market in any way, shape or form. So I think a lot of times it's really important to realize that just because you're not investing as much money, doesn't mean you can't still invest that money into other avenues and other ways to make money as well. The last major strategy or kind of suggestion I would have for you is simply don't sweat it that much. Realistically, I'm not one of those people that check my portfolio every single day. And it's because I know people that check it 10 or 11 times a day. And if they're down $40, they really let that get to them. It can absolutely ruin their day. At the end of the day, I set up my portfolio and it kind of has a plan and has a strategy behind it. There's a lot of great ETFs in there. There's a lot of great growth stocks in there and there's plenty of great dividend stocks in there. I have a plan, I have a vision, and as long as you stick to that, you're gonna be just fine. If you're one of those people that kind of stresses every single day or kind of watches your portfolio and kind of freaks out, if we have a bad day, a bad week, or even a bad month, chances are you're either not evaluating your risk tolerance enough, you know, you're putting things out there that you're really not willing to give up, or maybe you're just investing in a couple of stocks that are a little too volatile for you. That's something you might want to take a look at because realistically having a bad week or having a bad month in the stock market shouldn't have that big of an impact on your life. You shouldn't be super, you know, oh, I'm huge down in the dumps today because I lost a little bit of money. It's the way the stock market goes. It's going to go up. It's going to go down. I mean, realistically, I'm only 27 years old and this is going to happen probably another 200 times in my life. We're going to have down weeks. We're going to have down months. We're going to have down times in the market. As long as you have a plan, as long as you have a strategy, you're going to be absolutely fine and you shouldn't sweat it that much. So I hope that's a good answer for those of you guys asking me. Again, I'm just kind of watching my cash flow, kind of watching, you know, how much money I'm putting into the market, kind of in the downturn. I'm definitely doubling down on certain positions. So there's a couple of stocks out there. I really liked the valuation before. The stock price dropped down. So obviously I like that valuation even more now. I put in some stop losses just to kind of, you know, lock in some of those profits. Some of the positions, you know, I've been up 30, 40% on. I don't want to watch that go back down to zero. So I want to lock in some of those profits. At the end of the day, if there's no stocks that actually make a lot of sense for you, take that money that you were going to invest and find other ways to make money out of it. Start up a side hustle or put it into real estate or something like that, that isn't necessarily going to follow the trends of the market. And finally, don't sweat it. You know, you're a young investor. You have a lot of time left in the market. One down month isn't going to affect you that much in the long term. Anyways, I've been David with Average Joe Investing and I will see you all very soon.